welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel, brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, I want to show you how to make a really great Christmas stocking. Specifically, the Festive Feral Stocking. Isn't this beautiful? You create this beautiful stocking by following a chart from the top of this stocking all the way down to the toes. And you work three different colors of Red Heart's with love yarn. This is the color I will be using today. It's called papaya. And when you follow the chart and place the colors as indicated in the chart, that's what gets you this really great geometric um, pattern all the way down the stocking. Now, this stocking is all started off with this really great cuff, which is made with the Red Heart fur yarn. The Red Heart fur yarn is so incredibly soft. I can't even express to you. It feels literally like fur. It looks a little bit like this. <laughs> and this is actually the yarn I will be using today. This is called Seaport. Isn't it beautiful? It's so furry. Along with these two yarns, you need a variety of needles. They include a pair of size 11 straight needles. And this is what we will make the cuff portion with. So the 11 straight needles. You will need a pair of size eight 16 inch needles. And this is what we will make the entire stocking in, in the round. And when we get down to the toe, we will need some double pointed needles. You also need some stitch markers. I've got some fun snowflake stitch markers here just to kind of keep on theme. <laughs> You'll need a pair of scissors and some waste yarn. So I have grabbed some nice smooth waste yarn right here that I can use for that portion of the project. Last but not least, don't forget, you also need some bent tip steel yarn needles. So that way we can weave in all our ends when we're done. Now that you know the materials, what about the pattern? Well, as always, it is free and available at redheart.com. I'll be sure to put a link to the pattern in the video description box right below this video. And while you're down there, please smash that like button as my kids say. Once you have the pattern and your materials, join me back here and I'll walk you through everything you need to know in order to complete this really great Fair Isle stocking. Let's go ahead and make this really great stocking. The first part of the stocking has us begin with the fur yarn. And I know it's a little bit difficult to see on camera, but bear with me, it's only for three rows. Go ahead and take your wrapper off. And with this particular yarn, you wanna grab it from the outside. And when I tell you this stuff is furry, it is so furry, it is just, it is so fun. I just love this so much. So this is the part of the stocking we will begin with. So I'm gonna go ahead and move our stocking out of the way since we don't need it here and I will pull in this fur yarn. Using our size 11 straight needles, we wanna go ahead and cast on 20 stitches. Now you can use any cast on method you want. For me, I like to have a nice secure and stable cast on, so I'm gonna to choose to use the long tail cast on, but if you wanna use something different, you absolutely can. For me, I need to make sure I do the slip knot with enough tail, so I'm gonna make my slip knot right here and if you need detailed instructions for how to do a slip knot, go ahead and check out my video description box below. I'll put a link to a specific video with that. Once I get that one stitch on, it's gonna be very important that I count my stitches here because it's very difficult to see the actual yarn. The only way to actually see it for me is to find the center sort of seam of the yarn and know that that is where I need to count because that is a full stitch. So if I have one stitch on my needle, I need to do 19 more. Not that you can tell, but I have 20 stitches on there. It looks really hard to see, doesn't it? So for this part of the stocking, it will be very difficult for you to see me actually knit on this fur yarn. But I'm gonna show you and try and explain some tips that way at home, as you're working with your yarn, hopefully you can feel your way along and get through these three rows. Once you get your 20 stitches cast on your needle, you wanna go ahead and knit three rows. So with this yarn, the easiest thing to do, as I mentioned earlier, is find that center seam of the yarn. And sometimes you have to use your finger and just kind of feel it. And you can push that up towards the tip of your needle and go ahead and knit that one stitch, okay? You kind of have to feel your way along with this yarn. 
So once you knit that first one, you then do the same thing. You kind of feel for the next stitch. Sometimes as you're running your, your um, needle across it, you can actually kind of feel a click to it because you can feel that center bit and just knit across. Okay, and as I mentioned, I know this is very difficult to see. This is the start of the stocking though, so I wanna make sure I show you. Again, I'm finding that center bit and I'm going to knit. I'm gonna go ahead and knit my three rows. You do the same, join me back here and we'll move on to the next part. Once you get done with your three rows, it'll look something like this. Go ahead and cut your yarn and leave a little bit of a tail, that way we can weave in later, but the best thing I can say about cutting this so you don't get fur everywhere is find that little center seam and just cut real close to that seam and it'll separate off. Then you'll be done with whatever you have left over, you can set aside, and we have some stitches on here. Now that we've completed this part, we are going to go back and work into all of these stitches with our With Love yarn and transfer to a circular needle. The first thing I'll do is make sure I have my circular needle into the hand that I'm going to knit onto and grab the color A that I'm going to use for my stocking. Now, as I'm working along, just as I did before, I want to make sure I'm finding each stitch individually and I'm going in with my circular needle. Now what I will do is I will yarn over with my new yarn and pull up a loop, but I'm not done. I don't let that loop fall off yet. I have to swivel around and go into the back leg of that stitch, yarn over and pull up. So now I have two loops and now I come to the front of that same stitch again, go into it, yarn over and pull up. Can you see now I have three stitches that popped out of that one stitch? So as I jump that off, I now have three live stitches onto my right hand needle and I will find the next stitch in the fur and do the same thing. So I will go into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, go into the back leg of the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and go into the front leg of the stitch once again, yarn over, pull up a loop, and off. So now I have six stitches on my needle. To make this a little bit more clear, I want to show you how to do this on some smooth yarn so that way you can see for sure how this particular increase is made. So I just happen to have a little work in progress right here that I'm going to use to show you how this stitch is made. So this would be the first stitch. This would be the first stitch of your fur. You will go into it just like you're going to knit and then yarn over and pull up a loop. Now you'll take your needle, swivel around, go into the back leg of that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now you take your needle, go back into the front leg of that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. See how all of that was worked into that one stitch? Now I have three stitches and I can let that one stitch jump off. Let me show you that one more time. You go into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Back leg of the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, front leg of the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and off. Now I have six stitches where I originally had two. Go ahead and complete this row on your fur yarn. Once all of the stitches are transferred to the circular needle, you can put your straight needles away. At this point, you should be able to look at your circular needles, go back and just make sure you have 60 stitches on the needle. Once you have that, we will begin to work in the round at this point, which is gonna be so fun. And this is where your stitch markers will come into play. These stitch markers are ones that I made and I do have videos for how to make stitch markers right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel if you're interested. You simply will place that stitch marker onto your right hand needle. Now that we have all 60 stitches on our needles, we will continue on by knitting four rounds. To knit in the round, you simply pick up your needle and you treat both of these as if they are straights. They just happen to have all of the stitches on a cord holding them together. And you can just begin knitting all the way around. So you wanna make sure you're just knitting into each one of those stitches that we just got done creating. And we will do this for a total of four more rounds. When you get to the end of your round where your marker is, you will simply slip your marker. So slip my marker 
and then continue on. So that indicates that I just finished my first round. And with that, I am at the end of my four rounds. So I could slip my marker and I will continue on. I will be honest with you, to me, this is the most difficult part of the whole stocking. That's right, even though we're doing Fair Isle, to me, working into the fur bits, that is, it's difficult to see your stitches. To me, that's the most difficult. So if you've gotten through this part so far, you are on the home stretch, in my opinion. Once you finish those four rounds, it's time to start on the leg. And for the leg, we have to follow a chart. As we take a look at this chart, you will notice that there are numbers on the right hand side and there is a total of 30 stitches represented on the bottom portion. It's important to note that that means you will repeat one full row of this chart twice to complete a full round on the stocking. When you're reading this chart, you want to read it from right to left. You will read every single row from right to left. The reason you're reading the instructions from right to left is because we are working in the round. So our work will continually be like this. So we will always get back to that first stitch after we finish the last stitch. So you will always read the chart from right to left. Continuing on looking at the chart, you can see that all the colors are represented, whether it's color A, B, or C. The first six rows of this chart are just done with singular strands of yarn in each particular color. It isn't until we get to row seven when we start to do some color changes by using Fair Isle. Fair Isle, or stranding, is a technique where you use two or more strands of yarn across a singular row following a chart. On this chart, looking at round seven, you will notice that we will be working the stitches with color B and color A every other stitch. On round eight, we will work with color C and color B. Then on round nine, we go back to color B and color A. This allows us to get a really great checkerboard effect using all three colors that are used in the stocking. It's really not that difficult. The hardest part is just figuring out how to keep tension on the yarn without making puckering in the actual stitches. So what I want to do now is show you how to work the Fair Isle technique and then you will have to just continue on following the chart and using the Fair Isle technique. I've worked my sample up here through round six and the first thing I want to do is I will take my yarn and I am going to place one color in each hand. I'm using the tension, I wrap for me, I wrap my yarn around my pinkies for tension and I just keep whatever it is consistent. Then I'm gonna follow along with the chart. I can see that my first stitch is with my color B and for B, color, for me, color B is tan. So I will wrap my needle with the tan and come out. The next stitch is color A and for me, that's my papaya. So I will wrap my needle and come out. As I follow along with the chart, you'll notice that every other stitch is the opposite color of yarn. So as I'm working here, I don't have to let go of my needles to re-grasp another strand of yarn because I have the yarn already in play, ready to be worked. Now, if you find it too difficult to hold the yarn in each hand like so, you can just go ahead and work with one hand where when it's time to do one particular color, you pick it up and knit with it. And then when it's time to do the next color, you pick it up and knit with that. It does take a little bit more time to do it that way, which is why I prefer to do it in this method. One thing you do have to make note of as you're working Fair Isle is making sure that the floats are not too tight. When we're working with two colors, the floats are really short, so it's easy that we could keep these stitches really tight and the floats would have things um, pull in too much and they would pucker, because these floats will not stretch. So as you're working along, make sure you're constantly like stretching out, evening out your 
stitches so that way as you work along your floats are not too tight and you're getting some puckering in your work. You'll notice as I work along I'll stop and I'll stretch things out like even them out a little bit and then I will continue on working. It's just a way to make sure that my stitches are not going to pucker too much. Okay, so it's really important you do that because these floats, that's the section of yarn that would go from this tan behind the papaya to the next tan, that little bit, that will not stretch. So if you're getting puckering in your stocking, it doesn't matter how much you steam it or block it or whatever it is, it's always going to pucker because the yarn is not going to stretch in that float. So it's at this point in time that you need to make sure that those floats are nice and evenly spaced out to where they aren't too tight. Now I will just go along, I'm going to continue on working my pattern following my chart and changing colors as necessary. What I need you to do is follow the leg chart through round 68. Then we need to prepare for the afterthought heel. So I'm gonna get to round 68, you do that too, and join me back here and we will get our um, stocking prepared for the afterthought heel. And here we go. I have worked rows 1 through 68 all the way up. Obviously my colors A through C are a little bit different than on the diagram, but you can see the beautiful feral pattern taking shape. Now it's time for us to go ahead and place the heel and to do so we're going to work through a variety of stitches both with the B color that is on the needle and with our scrap yarn. So let's go ahead and do that now. With color B that's already on the needle, we want to knit 45 stitches. So let's go ahead and knit 45 stitches. Once you've knit 45 stitches, go ahead and drop color B. And with your scrap yarn, and I'm just using Scrubby Smoothie here because it's a nice smooth cotton yarn, we want to go ahead and we want to knit 30 stitches. When you get to your marker, go ahead and slip your marker, keep it in place, and continue on. Once you have your 30 stitches completed, it'll look a little something like this. What we need to do now is slip those 30 stitches back to the left hand needle and then knit those waist stitches again with our color B. To slip the stitches, you simply go into the stitch through the back leg and we're just going to slip them all the way over onto that left hand needle. When you get to the marker, slip that over as well. Once you've slipped all those stitches, you're back to where your color B is hanging out waiting for you. If your waist yarn is really nice and long, you can go ahead and snip it. I know that I have a really long piece of waist yarn here. And then I'm just going to tie mine with just a little knot just so I don't accidentally grab it and pull on it. But all I will do now is working back across those stitches with the waist yarn, I'm just going to knit them. Yes, when I come to the marker, I slip my marker. Now that I've slipped that marker, I'm ready to go on to the foot portion of my stocking. And to do that, I will simply follow along with the chart for the foot portion this time. Conveniently, the foot portion starts off with row one and color B. So I can continue on knitting this entire round with color B. Then I will continue on working the foot portion for rows 1 through 31 of the foot chart. Go ahead and continue with the foot chart for your stocking. Then join me back here and we will work on the toe. I just finished the foot of my stocking and I chose to do striping versus fair isle because I wanted the, the foot of my stocking to be a little bit different. But if you have followed along in the pattern, you have a really nice fair isle look on the bottom of your stocking. Now it's time to create the toe. And when we do the toe stitches, we're no longer going to use color A and B. We will only be using color C. 
And when we use color C for this round, we are going to be transferring our stitches onto double pointed needles. So we can remove our marker, my cutie little marker. And I have a variety of size eight double points here in a couple colors. And the reason I wanted to make sure I grabbed some with different colors is I'm hoping it will help you better see what needle is where. So um, hopefully that will help out. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab one needle and I will go ahead and begin knitting and I'm gonna knit 15 stitches onto this needle. So instead of using the other end of my circular, I simply begin knitting onto this double pointed needle and I wanna put 15 stitches onto this needle. Once you get 15 stitches on the needle, go ahead you can kind of pull that needle up to make sure that everything's moving. You will grab your next double pointed needle. Now I'm gonna grab a different color so you can see um, you know, how the stitches are working up here. But you are simply going to now knit another 15 stitches onto this new needle. The biggest thing I want you to make sure you're doing here is make sure this stitch on the first needle you used butts up very closely to the first stitch you are knitting onto the new needle. And then in order to keep that in place, you wanna make sure you knit that second stitch nice and taut as well. And then carry on getting 15 stitches onto this needle. Once you have 15 stitches onto that needle, go ahead and rotate around. The stitches will not fall off of those needles, so don't worry about it. Grab a new needle, and once again, when you knit this first stitch, make sure it's nice and tight to the last stitch you did on that needle is really nice and tight to the first stitch on that needle. And then do the same thing to the second and continue on putting 15 stitches onto this needle. One last time, you have 15 stitches remaining. So go ahead and grab the last double pointed needle and knit those 15 stitches onto that needle. Once all your stitches are knit onto that needle, you now have a circular needle that is no longer in use. You can set that out of the way. And all of your stitches are now placed on four double pointed needles. At this point, we are still working in the round, only now we have double pointed needles in play. So we will use one more needle as our needle that we hold in our right hand, and we will knit around. Every time we finish one needle from our left hand, we will rotate and transfer everything to a new needle. Let me show you what I mean. This first round is just knit. So here I go. I am gonna start right here and I will grab a needle. This is my fifth needle. And what I will do is simply start knitting on this next needle and right here at the start, you'll notice I pulled really nice and tight to get that stitch on the new needle as close as possible to the last stitch on the previous needle. That's very important. So is knitting that second stitch nice and tight. That will prevent any sort of ladders in your work. That's very important that you knit those first two stitches nice and tight. When I get to the end of this particular needle, you will see that I will have an empty needle in my left hand. Right there, I have an empty needle, and all the stitches are on the new needle. So all I do is I transfer those, or I just shove those stitches so they're in the center, rotate my work clockwise, rotate my work clockwise. So now I'm looking at the next needle. This is why I made it a different color, so you can see that it's the next needle. And I will take my spare needle, the one that just got done, and start knitting the stitches onto the new needle from this one. And I will do this all the way around. Every time I get to the end of a needle, I rotate my work clockwise and I move around. When you get to end of the round, you will have all of your stitches still on the double points, but now you have two rows completed with your color C. The next step is for us to begin shaping the toe. So this next round is all about the shaping. You'll notice in the instructions, it states that we need to knit to the last two stitches of this first needle. So I'm knitting down to the last two stitches of this first needle. When I get to those two stitches, I will now work a knit two together. So I will put my needle into two stitches of 
that are left on that needle and I will knit them together and off. Now I'm at the end of that needle so I put those stitches to the center, rotate clockwise and I'm to needle two. Now here for needle two I start off with an SSK. So I will go into this stitch and slip it as if to knit and slip that one as if to knit and then knit those two stitches together through the front leg or through the back leg. So I slip, slip, knit, and now I'll knit to the end of this needle. When I get to the end of the needle, I move those stitches to the center, rotate clockwise, and I carry on. So I'm at needle three. So on this one, I will knit down to the last two stitches and work a knit two together once again. Last two stitches of this needle, knit those two stitches together to work a decrease move those stitches to the center and rotate. I'm on the last needle of this round, so this is my needle four, and I work an SSK. So I slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, stick the left hand needle into the front leg of those two stitches and knit them together. And I will knit to the end of this needle. By the end of this row, I have decreased by four stitches. You'll notice that the decreases are at the same point on this particular stocking. They're on the outside edges. If this is the center point where I began, this is where the decreases are beginning. For round two, you are just knitting all the way around. Then you will repeat rounds one and two three more times or until you get 11 stitches on each needle. Once you get down to 11 stitches, you will repeat round one only a total of four times. Once you've repeated round one four times, you have a total of seven stitches on each needle. You will now use needle four to knit across all of the stitches on needle one. So we'll simply knit all of these stitches using needle four off of needle one. And what this will do, it'll put all the stitches onto this needle. So all of those stitches on that side of the stocking, see it's the bottom of the stocking, are now all on needle four and my yarn is over here at the corner. Now I'm going to go ahead and combine the stitches on needle two and needle three simply by slipping them all onto one needle. So I am just going to slip them all onto my needle three because it's a different color. So you could have, I could have slipped them the other direction too. It doesn't really matter. Just as long as they're all slipped into the same, same needle. So I don't need those anymore. What's going to happen now is we are going to graft this toe together using the Kitchener stitch. First thing you need to do is make sure you have a piece of yarn that is long enough to go around this three times. So if you were to actually take your yarn and just go around this three times, that would give you roughly the right amount of yarn you need to graft this together. I always give myself a little bit of cushion by giving myself a little bit extra yarn as well, just to make sure. Once you have that, go ahead and snip it just like I did. And I'm gonna unwind this because I don't want it wound. And I'm going to position the stocking so that the yarn is coming off of the needle in the back, okay? So it's the one that's behind. For this, it's my light blue one. Now I'm going to thread this yarn onto a bent tip tapestry needle. And I'm gonna go ahead and I will do a setup row. So for the setup row, I need to go into this first stitch as if to purl. So it's the first stitch on my purple needle as if to purl and I bring that yarn forward. I go into the first stitch on my blue needle as if to knit, and I bring that yarn back. Now, here is the Kitchener stitch. This is our repeat. We'll go into this first stitch as if to knit on the purple needle and have that jump off. And then I'll go into the next stitch on the purple needle as if to purl and leave that on bring my yarn between, I'm going underneath my purple, so I'm between these two needles. I'm gonna go into this first stitch on my blue needle as if to purl and take that off. And I'll go into the next stitch on my blue needle as if to knit 
and I will leave that on. Okay? Now, coming back to the front needle or my purple needle, I will go in as if to knit and take that off and then go into the next stitch as if to purl but leave it on and then give that a pull. As you're pulling that, what you're doing is you're pulling this close and it's going to look very nice. Moving back to the back needle, I'll go into this first stitch on my blue needle as if to purl and that one is going to come off and then I'll go into the next stitch on my blue needle as if to knit and leave it on. Go into the first stitch on my purple needle as if to knit and take it off. Go into the next stitch on my purple needle as if to purl and leave it on. I will continue on grafting this toe together until I get to the last two stitches. I am to my last two stitches on my needle here, on my needles, and all I would do is simply knit off and then pull that through and then purl off and pull that through, okay? When you give those a good pull, you'll notice as everything is separated apart, if you have grafted it together the way I showed you, your toe looks seamless. Look how beautiful that is. It's a Kitchener stitch toe. You simply will take this tail right here that we have, you will thread it through to the inside of your stocking. I have this long stocking here. And all I will do, I'll turn it inside out so you can see, is pull this tail through just like so. And then you can go ahead and bury in your end just as you would any other end on your project. Once you have finished the toe, go ahead and weave in any tails you might have, and it's time to go back and finish the afterthought heel. Then your project is complete. You're almost there. For the afterthought heel, the designer, Jody Lawanda, gives us precise instructions. So let's follow along. Find your waist yarn on your stocking. And for me, it's this multicolored yarn right there. And what we're supposed to do is go ahead and take one of those double pointed needles we used on the toe and working into the right leg of the stitch below the waist yarn, okay? So I'm just going in to that right leg right there. Working into the right leg of the stitch below the waist yarn, I'm going to pick up 15 stitches on this needle. So notice I'm working only into the right leg. So here's the stitch right here, that, that tan color, and I'm picking up the right leg of that stitch. So I have five of those picked up and I wanna make sure I have 15. I think that's 15, I'm gonna count. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. All right, so now I'll pick up another needle and I'll pick up the next 15. So I'm gonna make sure I have this correct. And I'm just going into the stitch directly below my waist yarn, picking up the right leg of the stitch and I will pick up 15 of them. If I've done everything correctly, I should be picking up the remainder of the stitches on this side of the waist yarn. So let's see here, let me count two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. All right, so I have 15 and 15. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and I will rotate my stocking so that way the two needles that I just put the stitches on are above the waist yarn and I'm gonna repeat the process. I'm gonna take my other needles here and going into the stitch, to the right leg of the stitch below the waist yarn, I will pick up another 15 stitches. All right, so I have 15. Looks kind of crazy, right? So I have 15 and 15, 15 and 15. Now I can go ahead and remove my waist yarn and if I've done everything correctly, I won't have any loose stitches. All of the stitches that I need are already on the needles. So to remove the waist yarn, I can go ahead and just using my tapestry needle because it has that nice bent tip on it, I can just start undoing all of these stitches by using the tip of that tapestry needle 
to just pull them out. Once you have taken out all of the scrap yarn, your work looks like this, very similar to how it did before we started the toe, correct? What we will do now is you will join with color C, and when you join with color C, you will work around, we're going to knit around, and we're going to pick up two extra stitches at this point and this point on the project. So we will have a total of 64 stitches by the end of this round. The pattern says to go ahead and start working at either side, either end of the project. So I'm going to pick this side right here. And using your color C, you will go ahead and knit around. So I'm using my double pointed needles just as we did when we did the toe. All right, so you still have to make sure you really get those first two stitches nice and snug so you don't get any ladders. All right, here we are. We have this point and we just want to pick up two stitches. So I am going to stick my needle into one of the edges here, okay? And I'm going to make it so I don't split the yarn. I'm just sticking my needle in and then I'm going to knit it. I'm going to knit this with the back leg just to twist that stitch so I get a nice um, curve to it. Then I'm going to stick my needle on the next stitch up and I'm going to knit it through the back leg also. just um, I know that twist it, but I want it to be nice and snug. So I just picked up two extra stitches. Now I turn my work. Make sure those don't poke everything. And I carry on. So I will pick up two extra stitches again before I get to the end of this round. So right before I get to where I started, I will pick up two more stitches. I am back to where I started. So I want to make sure I pick up two stitches right here. So what I'm going to do is I will stick my needle in. I'm going to stick it in right there and again I'm going to knit through the back leg. I like to twist my stitches when I pick them up um, when I do little pieces like this because I think it just makes it a little bit more secure. It's a personal preference. You don't have to if you don't want to. I'm just knitting it through the back leg just to twist that stitch a little just to make it a little bit tighter and so then I have two stitches. So now if I went and counted all of these I have a total of 64 stitches. The instructions now say I need to knit one full round before I actually shape the heel. So let me knit one full round. I've knit one full round and it's time to work into the shaping of the heel. Now the shaping of the heel is done very similar to the way we did the toe. Only we're already at the side of our foot. So we will begin with a knit one and then we do an SSK and we'll knit to the end of this needle. Once you're done with that needle, you rotate once again. We're on to needle two and we will knit on needle two till we get to the last three stitches. When we get to the last three stitches, we work a knit two together and then a knit one. So we've just done two decreases, one at this corner, one at this corner. Rotate our work and I'll do that all again. So I'm going to decrease right here. First I will knit one and then I work an SSK and then I knit to the end of this needle. Rotate my work and I will knit to the last three stitches on this needle. And right here, I do a knit two together and then a knit one. I have now decreased four stitches total. Now I have to do one full round of just knit. Then I repeat rounds one and two 
four more times until I get down to 44 stitches. Once you get down to the 44 stitches, you then will repeat row one until you get down to 20 stitches. Then it's a matter of moving all of the stitches onto two needles and grafting the afterthought heel together just as we did the toe. Once you're done grafting the heel of your stocking, it'll look like this. You'll have a very nice line of decreases on either side of your heel and right at the center, that's where it looks like it's seamless because you did the beautiful graft. Once it's all done, your stocking will look like this. You'll have your fur top, your beautiful fair isle stranding done all the way down to this point. Then you have the stranding you did for the foot of your stocking, your beautiful toe with the lovely grafted stitches together, and then the afterthought heel, which was really easy by picking up those stitches and then working the decreases at this point and this point and grafting it together. Such a cool little stocking. Hopefully you've had fun making this stocking and I can't wait to see yours, maybe with some unique colors just like mine. If you share on social media, make sure you use hashtag MarleyBird and I'll be sure to see your beautiful stocking. Please be sure to hit subscribe to the MarleyBird YouTube channel so you're up to date whenever I release a new video, making you a better knitter and crocheter. I hope you really enjoy this Fair Isle stocking. I know I did. I'm Marley Bird. Proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. Bye. Everything you need to know about knitting or crochet can be found right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Learn with Marley Bird. Visit youtube.com forward slash Marley Bird.